uh, trend. Generally, though, if we pool the effects of everything, we see that the lower, uh, the lower flow tends to grow uh, better on average. If we look at Montipra, we see a very contrasting pattern, which is uh, interesting. Could uh, suggest some ecological partitioning. Um, so at 19 days for low flow, we see this very clear uh, curve where we start to see photo inhibition starting to happen in the full sun and in the 1x uh, shade cloths uh, in the low flow. But in the high flow, uh, we start to see actually higher growth. So this is kind of conforming to our predictions of our model. Um, after 41 days, we see again the same pattern, uh, very nice, uh, and a, a, an increase in growth for the high flow, uh, especially in the full sun. So you could actually see uh, bleaching very clearly in the, in the full sun treatments here. Um, so that was an interesting little experiment. That's just a summary of the most important results. We had some other. Uh, so the major conclusions uh, are that low flow, um, around 4 centimeters per second, uh, seemed to result in greater growth and less variance in both species. Light ha had a profound effect on growth. Parietes, we can estimate that at least the optimal PAR is around 1,200, uh, possibly higher. Montipra, we noted that uh, photo inhibition started to come in um, at around 450 micromoles per uh, meters per second, but that really depended on the flow regime. Uh, so light and flow interact. Uh, parietes has, um, it, for parietes, it increased the variance and reduced the effects of light. For Montipra, high flow reduces the photo uh, inhibition in high light, as one would expect. So what does that mean? Um, it provides some baseline information on ap optimal habitat conditions for transplant, um, for management uh, concerns. It also increases our ability to culture coral. We know a little bit more about some, some baseline parameters for uh, what the optimal conditions are for growing these coral, coral species. <laughs> So um, second experiment that we did this past year uh, was looking at different types of commercially available coral food. The aquarium industry is a billion dollar a year industry and uh, we were hoping we could learn something from them. So here we have these different coral foods and they're uh, not cheap. They're like $33.90 per bottle or $20 per bottle. This is what is listed on the side of the label as being in these coral foods. So really this was a a pilot study for what we wanted to uh, look into for uh, next year's uh, Hickory project. Uh, we used a very similar uh, design as far as the sample size and uh, replicates. Um, we had uh, the four different uh, varieties. We had a control for each and a low, medium, and high dose. And again, the position was randomized. Uh, we had, uh, for each of the different varieties, we had uh, uh, one, uh, three, and 10x uh, concentrations. The 1x was the manufacturer's recommended dose, and the 10x was uh, 10 times that. Um, we had uh, the corals on a tile in a 20 liter bucket uh, with uh, air bubblers, um, and we would dose them by removing a standpipe, which would lower the water level, uh, separating all the buckets, and we would do that uh, for 24 hour period. Um, and we did that three times a week. Um, and then once a week, we would photograph them, uh, clean out all the buckets, re-randomize the tiles. And it was actually really labor intensive. Um, so we continued this for 45 days. And the results are uh, not too staggering. Uh, this is, again, centimeters, uh, square centimeters uh, in net growth, net tissue increase from the beginning of the experiment. Uh, this is pooled over all species, uh, over all dosage. So what we see is a pretty clear pattern of increasing dose. We see a decline in net growth. And this was surprising to me because um, I was expecting to find you know, massive growth and the corals would be super happy. Um, but we see no real significant difference between the controls and the manufacturer's recommended uh, dose and actually a significant decrease uh, for increasing the dose. This is surprising also because if you look at the maximum concentration, this is only six mils in a 20 liter volume. So it's very dilute stuff, uh, but yet it's having an effect. If we look at Montipra, uh, we get borderline significance here, but everything you can see is lower than the control. Uh, for parietes, uh, maybe, no, it's not significant between the control and the 1x and starts to get down a little bit for uh, increased dosages. We look at the different types of coral foods. We uh, don't see a significant difference between the controls, but we do see a pattern 
uh, where these two types of foods seem to be the worst performers um, relative to the controls in both Montipra and in Parites. Um, so this is an interesting preliminary study. I really want to repeat this. Uh, conclusions. Uh, <laughs> so the controls had a higher or equivalent growth and survivorship. And the implication is that commercial coral foods may actually inhibit coral growth. But there's uh, an important caveat for this that we use fragmented, freshly fragmented corals. So they're exposed. There may be an interaction with maybe increasing the bacteria load in the, in the buckets. Maybe uh, there's some kind of algal bloom or something going on. So we'd like to follow this up. We also used um, um, unfiltered seawater, well, coarsely filtered seawater. So there's zooplankton in there as well. So that might be a criticism, especially the coral food people might try to punch holes in this experiment. So <laughs> we'd like to follow it up in a, in a closed system, perhaps with uh, uh, instant ocean. Uh, we'd like to look maybe at dosing with some antibiotics to try to look at the, uh, maybe some broad spectrum antibiotics to see if that plays a role, uh, or with more developed nubbins. And we'd also like to examine the role of other potential nutrients, such as live food for the corals, and also look at the, the role of nutrients uh, for the zooxanthellae, look at uh, effects of low, low levels of fertilizer. So this is a very controversial area. Um, coral nutrition is uh, a lot of controversy, but we're uh, interested in at least following up on the implications um, as far as growing corals go. Uh, another experiment that we did, um, I'm just kind of glossing over um, everything that we've done um, was a fusion experiment. And this used uh, these large concrete blocks with uh, glossy tiles. Um, and we'd noticed that uh, nubbins from the same genotype, if you put them together, they were rapidly encrust and fuse. And we thought this would be a novel method for trying to get them, coax them to grow onto a, a, a surface uh, as rapidly as possible. So we had 10 different blocks here. And uh, we had two alternative uh, spacing patterns. 